Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, teacher. Uh, hello, good evening. Good evening teacher. Uh, sorry, guys, because I'm late. I'm three minutes late. I mean, four minutes late. Um, and well, welcome again to um, the big conference number three. I uh, will now be working um, on the exercises that I, uh, I said yesterday. And well, uh, first of all, I would like to know uh, what do you remember about the class uh, that we're discussing about the adverbs, okay? Uh, first of all, um, I would like to ask some questions, some specific questions to you. Uh, and well, uh, as a volunteer, you can, you can answer each of them, okay? Um, first of all, guys, um, what um, do you remember the adverb that can be uh, used uh, at the beginning, in the middle, and uh, at the end of the sentence? Do you remember the special case uh, of the adverb? Sometimes. Sometimes, yes, that's right. Okay, uh, second question. Um, what are the two uh, phrases that we use to use in uh, questions when asking for adverse of frequency? Do you remember that? How often? How often? Okay. Do you ever? So one of them. Do you, you one? Do you ever? Okay. Do you ever? Yes. Do you ever? That's, that's the second one. Well, um, today we're gonna be solving the exercise that I saw, that, that I, I mean, tell you yesterday. Um, and we're going to uh, see the web page of English Corporativo. Just give me a second. Uh, online, okay, here. Um, we're going to be checking that information. Um, do, do you complete it at all, or do you have any question before going to those exercises? Yes, no? Oh, teacher. No, you have uh, no questions, okay. Well, uh, can you see my screen? I'm, sh I'm trying to share my screen, I don't know if you can see it or not. Can you see my screen? Yes, I do. Yes, you yes. do. Yes, teacher. Okay, okay, very good. So um, this is about the homework that you develop. Uh, these questions are the exercises that it's supposed that you have to uh, answer it. The instruction says, read the following prompts Choose the response in which the adverb in brackets is placed correctly. So in this case, we are going to decide um, where that adverb in this case, in this case ever in, in the exercise number one, uh, is it correct place? Um, so as a volunteer, anyone has the answer of this exercise from the exercise number one? Me, teacher. Okay, Elena. So uh, the first. The first one, yes. Yes. Do you ever play sports? Okay. Do you ever play sport? Very good. The second one, uh, it says, sure, I play soccer. In in this case, in, in brackets, we have twice a week. What is the uh, correct one? Is the number three. Number three, can you read it for me, please? Sure, I play soccer twice a week. Okay, very good. Well, um, the number three, I'm going to check the um, selected there, um, and we're going to see the number three. Okay, what do you do on Saturday morning? What do you usually do on Saturday morning? Number two. Okay. Number two. Two. Ah, number two. Okay, number two. What do you do on Saturday usually in the morning? Okay. Number four. Two. 
two. Number four. Two. Nothing much. Nothing I much. almost always um, sleep until noon. Okay. I almost always sleep until now. Okay. Let's see the number five. Just try to read the sentence if you want. You can say number, but uh, always read the sentence. Do you, do, do you often do aerobics at the gym? Okay. Number two, do you often do aerobics at the gym? Very good. Number six. No, I hardly ever no, do aerobics. No, I hardly ever. Uh, which one? It's number three. Number three. No, I hardly ever do aerobics. Very good. Number seven. The first one. Can you read it for me, please? Do you always exercise on Sundays? Okay, very good. And number eight. No, number one. two. No, I never exercise on Sundays. That's mean the second uh, sentence. No, I never exercise on Sunday. Very good. Um, Number nine. The number one. The first one. Do, the first one. What do you usually do after class? Very good. Uh, and the last one. What is the last one? I go out with my classmates about three times a week. Okay. I go out with my classmates about number three times three. a week. Okay. Let's see. Let's check. And you have the um, you have just forty five of fifty uh, points here. Let's see why. This one, okay. The number three you told me. What do you do on Saturday usually morning? It's the first teacher. It's the first, the first one. one. The first what? one, right? The first one, just the first one. What do you? What do you usually do on Saturday morning? I, I think that, let's see, just let me check here. Oh, okay, yes, it is. So uh, there you have the exercise. You have the 50-50, that means 50 points here. And you're going to get that. Uh, we're going to go to uh, the next, um, the next um, uh, topic. Uh, that's about pronunciation. Uh, first of all, we're going to see, uh, we're going to read the lesson objected and it says, uh, well, you're going to read it. Any volunteer who wants to read this objective? In this section, participants will listen to intonation with direct address. This helps sound natural when speaking. Okay. So uh, we're going to watch a video and there we're going to listen the intonation of the doctors. That's a, a different topic that we're going to be discussing. Here we have the, uh, the video. It says pronunciation, intonation with direct address. So let's see what happened with this video. We're going to watch and then we're going to be discussing some things about it. So please pay attention to it. Uh, just let me share the audio. Okay, share the audio here. Okay, so pay attention to this video. In this session, participants will listen to intonation with direct address. This helps sound natural when speaking. There is usually falling intonation and a pause before the name. You're really fit, Paul. She looks tired, James. I feel great, Dr. Lee. Remember to listen and practice as many times as needed. 
Okay. Uh, In this session, please. There is usually falling into. Okay, uh, we're going to see this um, this exercise uh, that is in section number, uh, well, the, the, in section number one, that is about pronunciation and intonation with direct address. Uh, the instruction says, listen and practice. Notice these statements with direct address. They are usually falling intonation and a pause before the name. What happened here? When we are uh, giving like direct address, um, um, in this case, we almost over, we are going to uh, use the falling intonation. What does it mean, falling intonation? Uh, that's mean that we start with a, a high tone or in our pronunciation, and then tone we is going to be falling. Like, you really fit, you really fit. So like, um, let me, Okay, let me show you. Well, there, there you have the arrows. Um, like, um, you are really fit, okay? She looks tired. Uh, I feel great. So it's like a falling intonation, like like, um, like loss of uh, the tone of this. Uh, and something that we have to uh, also see in this kind of uh, sentences, is that um, we are going to uh, make like a pause uh, between uh, the, the sentence and the noun that we're going to um, we're going to say. In the examples that we have here, we, we can say like I really fit. Uh, I mean, you are really fit, Paul. Okay, Paul. Uh, she looks tired, James. I feel great, Dr. Lee. So it's like a pause between, um, between the, the sentence and the noun that we are referring to, okay? So uh, do you have any question for this part? No, No, okay. Let's go to the following, uh, because uh, tonight we're going to be finishing section number one. Um, nation and a pause before. Okay, here we have this, and uh, now we're going to be um, discussing about a, a conversation, okay? It says, in this lesson, participants will listen and follow a conversation about fitness. Notice questions with how and short answers. Um, in this video, we're going to see the conversation and we're going to identify um, what are those sentences that uh, start with how and, and that start with, and it says in the, in the, um, in the um, a lesson objective here, um, that start with how and also the charts answer for it. So pay attention to it. In this can you listen to the audio? In this can you listen to yes. Okay, so pay attention to it. In this class you will listen and follow a conversation about physical skills. Hi everyone. Are you ready to listen to another conversation? This time, we will learn to ask questions using how. Listen and repeat. I'm a real fitness freak. You're in great shape, Keith. Thanks. I guess I'm a real fitness freak. How often do you work out? Well, I do aerobics twice a week, and I play tennis every week. Tennis? That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, do you want to play sometime? Uh, how well do you play? Pretty well, I guess. Well, all right, but I'm not very good. No problem. I'll give you a few tips. In this class, you listen. So there, um, can you identify the uh, sentences? And I mean, in this case, questions that start with how. What are those? 
how often do you work up? Okay, that's a question that we were discussing in the previous class, right? Uh, the use of how often, okay, how often. So, um, what he's asking is about the workout. Workout, that's mean like, uh, um, like working out with some instruments or playing some, uh, or any game that uh, involves physical movement. So, um, how often do you work out? The questions that we can receive from that, uh, it are kind of similar to the ones that we were discussing in the previous classes. Uh, and we can say, well, I do aerobics twice a week. If you know that we are using the algorithm, like twice a week. Uh, that means two times in a week. So uh, in the second, ex, uh, I mean, uh, questions here, it says, how well do you play? So if we notice here, um, in this part, we are receiving a short answer because it doesn't require like uh, a lot of explanation for it. We use how uh, the answer could be like in the example here, like pretty well, no bad, okay, so bad. That's the pain of, of the answer. But um, are just, are just, um, some uh, some some short answers that we can give to them. How well do you play? Well, or how well? Um, or how many times do you um, watch uh, movies? For instance, you are going to give me a short answer, uh, and that's how that's the way how these uh, kind of questions work. Uh, don't confuse, don't confuse short answers with the short answer that we uh, um, usually do with um, a yes or not question, okay? Because it's not the same. When I refer to short uh, answers is because we're going to give uh, a small explanation about it, just the essential information for it. Know the complete information, because that's not what uh, the other person asking us is asking us. I mean, um, but um, just uh, uh, the well, in this case, the, the direct information that we're going to be asking to someone uh, will be, will be we're going to receive it in a in a short way. Okay, so uh, there we have. We're going to work with this. A exercise in this conversation, and we are going to use the questions um, like, like this with how often, and also we are going to be using a uh, sen sentence in this case, uh, well, questions with how. And the answers that you have to use must be short. Um, do you want me to explain that instructions? In Spanish, yes or not? See you now. Yes, please. Yes, okay. Um, eh, para esta actividad que vamos a realizar basada en esta en esta conversación, nosotros vamos a tomar este esta conversación como un ejemplo. Y vamos a crear una conversación. En este caso, eh, la vamos a trabajar de forma individual. Eh, ¿Por qué la vamos a escribir? O, o la van a digitar en cualquiera de las dos formas. Pues es, está bien. Um, y vamos eh, a tratar de utilizar o darle otro sentido, ¿verdad? No hablar este, directamente de, de, de lo que son um, deportes. Podemos hablar de otras cosas. Eh, algo con que nos relacionemos nosotros. Eh, y vamos a tratar de utilizar el how often dentro de la conversación y también vamos a intentar incluir preguntas haciendo uso del how, de, de, de la palabra este how, eh, donde nosotros también incluyamos respuestas cortas. Recordemos, las respuestas cortas no significan eh, simplemente decir sí y no, ¿verdad? Cuando me refiero a respuestas cortas para este tipo de pregunta son respuestas que me dan la información eh, esencial de lo que yo quiero saber. Si yo le pregunto, este, 
a Patricia, eh, a, a Patricia Herrera, por ejemplo, eh, ¿qué tan bien juega usted eh, fútbol? La respuesta que me va a dar sería probablemente... I do not, I do not play fútbol. Ok, you don't know play fútbol. So, si vemos es una, una respuesta... Eh, corta, ok no necesita tanta explicación no le estoy preguntando ni por qué juega este, ok ni por qué lo practica, entonces no es no es una respuesta eh, bastante larga, simplemente es eh, o le puedo preguntar a alguien más, este, qué tan bueno eres jugando eh, eh, basquetbol, ah, soy muy bueno ah, ah, no, no soy tan bueno son, son respuestas cortas, entonces vamos a intentar incluir este tipo de pregunta con este tipo de respuesta eh, dentro de la conversación. Les recuerdo, es una actividad individual y eh, simplemente la tienen que escribir. Eh, basémonos en este ejercicio. ¿Queda clara la indicación? Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. Excelente. Muy bien, entonces comencemos a trabajarlo. Van a tener eh, ocho minutos a partir de este momento. Si necesitan más tiempo, me lo hacen saber.
And if you finish the activity, you can, uh, if you are doing, um, if you are writing in a book paper or something like that, you, you can uh, just take a picture with your cell phone and send it to uh, the WhatsApp group. Um, if you are typing in your computer, you can take a screenshot, okay?
Okay, um, time is over. Do you need more time? I think I finish. Everybody finish? I need more time. You need more time. Uh, okay, um, I will give you two minutes more and then we're going to continue with uh, the class, okay? Okay. Okay, time time is over. Um, we're going to oh, see the the exercise. I, I think that some of you have been sharing um, your conversation, and that's good. Okay. Um, I was reading here that uh, Miss um, Ariola, who is um, Ariola Garcia? Yes. Ah, Miss Iliana. Ah, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Very good. So, uh, well. I was reading your conversation and I saw that you were using uh, both questions and that's good. You did a, a good work, okay? 
you did an amazing work. Uh, guys, if you haven't finished yet, uh, you can finish the exercise later and uh, try to send it uh, tonight if you can, okay? Because um, you're going to have an activity later that's going to be about the following topics uh, that we're going to be discussing here. Okay, but uh, try to finish and uh, send it as soon as possible. Uh, I want you to uh, go to the uh, lesson objective uh, 1.9, uh, where we have the lesson objective that it says, um, in these sections, participants will uh, watch and study questions with how and short answers. We are going to be focused on that, on it, okay? Um, we're going to watch this video and then I will be explaining some things about it. If you have any questions for me, you can uh, let me know. Si tienen alguna consulta, pues me lo pueden hacer saber. Eh, de momento vamos a ver el video y luego voy a estar explicando algunas cosas eh, relacionadas a esto eh, del uso del eh, how y las respuestas eh, cortas, ¿ok? Prestemos atención. Pueden eh, ver mi pantalla y escuchar el audio. Ah, ok, ok. Bien. Escuchemos entonces. In this session, participants will watch and study questions with how and to give short answers. Hello, everyone. We will go over four important questions we can ask in order to know frequency and performance. Notice all questions begin with how. Pay attention. Questions with how. Short answers. How often do you work out? Every day. Twice a week. Not very often. How long do you spend at the gym? 30 minutes a day. Two hours a week. About an hour on weekends. How well do you play tennis? Pretty well. About average. Not very well. How good are you at sports? Pretty good. Okay. Not so good. How, how often, how long. They refer to times or frequency. How well, how good. They refer to performance. How often do you go to English class? How long do you spend at school? How well do you speak English? How good are you at speaking English? Please answer these questions on our discussion box. Okay. In this session, participants will watch and study questions with how and to give what is all questions. Okay, we're going to stop here. Um, as you see, there we have four questions. Uh, when we use a how often and how long, that means we're asking for a, um, an adverb of frequency. Okay, we're going to be answering just with um, adverbs of frequency. That means every day, twice a week. It's, it's, there we have some examples that we can use it, but there are others that we have already uh, studied before in previous classes. Um, but we're going to uh, try to uh, give like an examples of it. It says, how often do you work out? How often do you work out? Possible answers could be like every day, twice a week, not very often. Um, it's like saying uh, always, like saying sometimes, like saying never, okay? So in this case, uh, in this uh, adverse of frequency. In the case of the how often and how long, uh, as it said in a video, both asked for um, adverse of frequency, like, like the ones that we have there. In the case of how well and how good, um, in this case, we are asking uh, for a specific information uh, and specific details about uh, the thing that we want to ask. For example, in example number one, it says, how well do you play tennis? How well do you play tennis? The possible answers could be like pretty well, about average, not very well. 
Okay, so in this case, we are going to give those short answers and is it correct to do in that way? Okay, but in this case, we are not using the adverse of frequency because we're, we are asking for quality, okay? Uh, how good are you on something? Ah, I'm pretty good, I'm okay, uh, no so bad. Things like that, we can answer it. And, and we can say just that. It's not necessary to explain more things about it. It's not necessary, okay? We can answer just saying pretty good, okay, not so bad, well, okay? So in, in this case, in those type, uh, type of uh, questions, okay? So here we have uh, four questions here that it says, how often do you go to English classes? How long do you spend at school? How well do you speak English? And how good are you at speaking? And as you see, there we have four answers that you are going to be, uh, I mean, uh, four questions that you are going to be answering um, in the chat box. In the chat box means uh, the chat that we had for this video conference. Uh, there you have a chat, so please just, um, just send the answers for each one. Oh, something that you must do here is to add the question and also add the your answer in this case, because these uh, questions has, are for you. And everybody is going to uh, get a, give a, her or his answer a, personally, okay? Is it clear what I'm saying? Do you want me to explain the uh, instructions in Spanish? Hello? ¿Está claro lo que, la indicación que he dado? ¿O lo explicamos en español? Yes, please. Yes, teacher, please. Sí, vale. Aquí tenemos cuatro preguntas. Estas cuatro preguntas eh, eh, tienen la misma función de lo que veíamos previamente. Eh, decíamos que el how often y el how long eh, preguntan, okay, o, o la idea es que con este tipo de pregunta a uh, la otra persona conteste con adverbios de frecuencia, como lo veíamos anteriormente en los ejemplos, dos veces a la semana, una vez a la semana, una vez al mes, dos veces al año, hay una infinidad de, de adverbios de frecuencia que nosotros podemos utilizar. Eh, en el caso de how well y how good, aquí estamos eh, utilizándolo como eh, para preguntar información más detallada, en referencia a, a, a pequeñas informaciones que nosotros nos gustaría saber. Por ejemplo, en, el, en la oración número 3, donde dice, How well do you speak English? Eh, la traducción sería como, ¿Qué tan bien hablas inglés? Aquí nos, eh, simplemente las respuestas, que de hecho son respuestas cortas, eh, nosotros las debemos dar de acuerdo a nuestra, a, a nuestra propia opinión. O sea, nuestro, vamos a evaluarnos un poquito y decir, Ah, yo lo hablo muy bien, yo lo hablo más o menos, yo no hablo nada. Este, y la información que ustedes le van a ir dando a cada una de estas preguntas va a ser de forma personal. Esa es la actividad. Contestar estas cuatro preguntas eh, con su información. Cada uno va a tener pues, una respuesta eh, diferente a la de sus compañeros. ¿Queda clara la indicación? ¿Dónde lo van a enviar? Lo van a enviar al chat de esta videoconferencia al chat box de esta videoconferencia. ¿Queda clara la indicación, chicos? Yes, teacher. Okay, perfecto. Yes. Muy bien, perfecto. Entonces, contestémosla. Ah, también me olvidé mencionarle que cuando contestemos, agreguemos la pregunta y la respuesta. ¿okay? Eh, no solamente enviemos la respuesta. Hagamos las dos cosas. Uno es por practicar más la escritura en inglés. Ok, así que por eso lo solicito de esa manera.
Bien, vemos creo que alguien ya envió su respuesta. Hafen, ok, do you go to Insta? I go to English class from, from Monday to Thursday. Um, bien, aquí este, um, vamos, vamos a intentar hacer lo siguiente. Déjenme ver quién fue. Uh, ah, Iliana. <coughs> Liliana, disculpe. Este, en el caso de la, de la pregunta, quiero este, tal vez solamente eh, hacer una pequeña modificación en la respuesta. Eh, la respuesta dice eh, que va a clase de inglés de lunes a jueves. Jueves. Ok. Si nosotros queremos cambiar esa respuesta, que es una respuesta bastante larga, eh, simplemente debemos utilizar un adverbio de frecuencia. Como son cuatro días, ¿cuá, ¿cuál adverbio de frecuencia podríamos utilizar nosotros en inglés? Usually for normal for a week. Ok, uh, sí, podríamos utilizar... Ajá, podríamos... Recordemos que cuando utilizamos el how often es porque nosotros vamos a dar respuestas como... Eh, una vez a la semana, dos veces a la semana, eh, una vez al mes. Entonces, en este caso, como son cuatro días, ¿cuántas? Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo quedaría la respuesta en inglés? ¿Serían? Four. Four days. Time. No, four times. Four times. A week. A week. Okay. Four days a week. Okay. O oh, four okay. days a week. Ok. Four days a week. Okay. Cuatro días a la semana o simplemente cuatro veces a la semana. Cualquiera de las dos respuestas, pues este cabe. Y a esa respuesta se le conoce como respuestas cortas. Porque si observa, no estamos dando a uh, una oración completa. Simplemente estamos proporcionando un adverbio de frecuencia. ¿Sí? Eh, indicando cuántas veces yo eh, asisto a la clase. Eh, por aquí tenemos también... Eh, la siguiente sería ah, lo mismo Patricia este, la, la mis, también es la misma uh -huh. ah, el mismo comentario cuando utilizamos how often siempre este, vamos a estar hablando por regularidades eh, regularidades me refiero a indicar cuántas veces realiza X actividad en tantos días ok por ejemplo, yo puedo decir, ah, en, en el ejemplo que ustedes tienen, tienen ahí, how often do you go to, to English class? Eh, yo puedo decir, I, I go to English class twice a week. Eso es por poner un ejemplo, pero esa sería una respuesta larga, ¿ok? Eh, porque yo estaría utilizando una oración. Yo puedo responder simplemente para, a, esa, a ese tipo de preguntas diciendo... Eh, twice a week, dos veces a la semana, twice a week. Twice a week. 
¿ok? O podemos decir eh, four days a week, o sea, dependiendo de lo que nosotros queramos contestar, pero respuestas cortas, ¿ok? Respuestas, eh, o sea, dar lo esencial de lo que se me está eh, pidiendo contestar. Ok. Les voy, voy a retroceder. Sí, sí, dígame. Ah, eso le quería pedir que si nos puede, por favor, uh, dar la diapositiva anterior para orientarme con el how, how long do you start. Ok, perfecto, perfecto. Uh -huh. ah, y, y aquí quería este, dirigirme. Eh, si ustedes observan cuando se pregunta how often, las respuestas posibles, miren cuáles son. Every day, twice a week, not every often. Eso es como para decir que casi nunca, ¿verdad? O, o no lo hace con regularidad. Eh, lo mismo sucede con el how long. Um, how long, ahí vamos a eh, indicar nosotros, este, eh, la respuesta este, es un poco similar a la anterior, pero aquí indicando el tiempo, o cuánto tiempo. Eh, lo vamos a indicar en periodos. Por ejemplo, eh, aquí nos dice 30 minutes a day, 30 minutos al día. Entonces yo puedo eh, utilizar en el how long, el tiempo que yo tardo en realizar una actividad. Y eso se le conocería como respuestas cortas. Ok. Thank you. Muy bien. Bien, um, como no tenemos este, demasiado tiempo, eh, creería yo, para poder completar esta actividad, este, sí vamos a, a dejarla como tarea. Eh, y van a llevar como tarea resolver, bueno, contestar esta, estas preguntas y también resolver. Not very often. Eh, y resolver los ejercicios. Okay, los ejercicios 1.11, si gustan, anote. Los ejercicios 1.11 y eh, los ejercicios del 1.13. 1.11 y 1.13. Eso los tenemos que tener resueltos para el día de mañana. Y um, con esto finalizaríamos lo que es la sección número 1. Repito, ejercicios 1.11 y 1.13. Muy bien, preguntas. Yes, teacher. Sí, dígame. Eh, en español se lo voy a decir porque es muy largo. Eh, no, claro, claro. Que, no se preocupe. Bueno, con otro compañero, nosotros eh, ya trabajamos en San Salvador. Él ¿Sí? es de Sonsonate, yo soy de Santa Ana. Eh, pues más o menos ahora estábamos hablando porque sí nos sentíamos un poco preocupados con el tema del tiempo porque no hemos podido ingresar a la plataforma y trabajar es que uh -huh. viernes y sábado le íbamos a estar dedicando un poco de tiempo porque si sí, entre uh -huh. entre la jornada de trabajo y el viaje y todo eso y todo lo demás eh, pues realmente se nos está dificultando un poco entonces en el caso, usted eh, dice digo, del progreso de la plataforma Giovanni. sí es correcto como al final uh -huh. la idea de nosotros es, es, es bueno, pues, irnos poniendo uh -huh. al día pero eh, al hacer las tareas a diario sí se nos está complicando porque no... Ok. No bien honesto, um, casi solamente... Que encima la computadora. Ok, solamente este, tal vez um, eh, recordarle un poco de lo que hablábamos al inicio de la, de la clase, Giovanni. Que aquí la idea es de que ustedes vayan a su propio ritmo. Si usted dice, um, yo me voy a poner a, a trabajar viernes, sábado, domingo, lunes, o sea, dependiendo del tiempo que usted tenga usted lo puede hacer con toda libertad. No es necesario que siga mi ritmo, ¿ok? Yo voy a ir dando la clase de acuerdo a un, a, a un horario, pero al final es usted quien este, decide cómo quiere trabajar en la plataforma. Porque si usted dice, es que no tengo tiempo por el trabajo, este, me imagino pues que usted va, um, como está inscrito aquí en el, en el curso, usted va a tener en su momento un tiempo que usted le quiere dedicar a la plataforma. Puede ser un sábado, puede ser un domingo, puede ser un viernes. Y no hay ningún inconveniente, ¿ok? Porque la, la idea este, del programa de Insafor eh, no es eh, 
o, o mejor dicho, el programa de, de Insafor está adaptado este, a, a sus horarios de trabajo, ¿okay? a, a sus eh, disponibilidades horarias. Eh, pues muchos de ustedes trabajan horarios este, de todo el día, prácticamente. Entonces, um, en el programa de Insafor eh, es, es así. Usted dedica eh, o, o organiza su tiempo para dedicarle al curso. Aquí, si usted este, eh, dice que lo quiere trabajar el sábado, puede hacer con toda libertad, don Giovanni. Este, lo quiere hacer el domingo con toda libertad. Quiere este, hacerlo en la mañana, en la tarde. O sea, aquí es, eh, es su propio ritmo el que va a tratar de, de, de buscar en el curso. Claro, algo que sí debemos tener este, muy, muy presente es que el curso tiene fechas límite. Eh, y para ello, este, no, no sé si son, déjenme ver, son cuatro semanas, si no me equivoco, son 16 uh, clases, son cuatro semanas, por módulo. Entonces, si eh, usted eh, finaliza eh, en esas cuatro semanas el módulo, pues usted está apto para ir al siguiente. Lo que sí les voy a recomendar es que eh, no intentemos llegar o, o saturarnos de información hasta el final, porque después eh, el tiempo no les va a dar. Eh, sí tratemos de buscar un ritmo, ustedes deciden cómo, pero este, eh, no dejemos todo para, para el final, sí, sino que tratemos de ir avanzando poco a poco. Eh, se nos ha pedido, eh, sí, que, que por lo menos para la mitad de curso, o sea, las dos semanas, eh, esta semana y la otra, finalicemos lo que es la sección 1, 2 y 3, ¿ok? Y lleguemos al, al examen de medio, de medio curso. Eh, y luego la semana 4, la semana 5, este, desarrollamos eh, la sección 4 eh, y 5 y el examen final. Eso es lo que se nos ha pedido. Eh, pero como les repito, este, para lograr ese proceso, ustedes deciden en qué tiempo lo pueden realizar, siempre y cuando respetando esos, esos, esos periodos de tiempo. ¿Sí? No les estoy diciendo, este, háganlo ahora eh, o háganlo mañana. Yo les dejo actividades, pero aquí solamente es como, como si usted tiene el tiempo para practicarlas, las puede, las puede practicar. Si no, pues váyase a la plataforma y ahí lo puede practicar en su espacio. ¿Ok? Así que, don, don Giovanni, no, no se preocupe. Ustedes este, crean su propio tiempo para trabajar. Muy bien, ¿otra consulta que tenga? No, teacher. De momento no. Ok, so um, that's, been, that's been all for tonight. And well, if you, have, uh, if you don't have uh, any other question, I uh, have to close the video conference and say goodbye and blessings for all of you. And have a nice night, okay? Blessings. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good night, teacher. Bye. Bye, Bye sir. <laughs> <laughs>